Hello and welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I'm your host, Maria Nadestab, and today I'm covering how to make a Python script into a command line program. This means that you can run it from the command line, from Bash, from the terminal on your Mac or a Linux machine. And since we spend a lot of time living on the command line when we're doing NGS analysis, we have all these wonderful tools like SAM tools, bed tools, we have aligners and variant callers and everything. And if you want your own scripts to fit into that environment so that you can just run them from the command line, you can make them part of your pipelines in Bash which I think the last video was about pipelines. And if you want to do these kind of things with your own scripts, kind of make them fit in, make them into real command line programs, this is the video for you. So we're gonna cover how to make a Python script into command line using a wonderful little package called argparse. that's extremely easy to use. And I basically just figured it out once and have been copying the code ever since and just fill in whatever information is needed that is different each time. So it's really easy to use and let's hop on over into the command line and into Sublime Text so that I can show you how to make your own Python scripts into command line programs. First, you just wanna install argparse and we can just Google for that. There's a nice page here that describes exactly what you can do. Uh, the easiest one is usually something like pip install argparse if you already have pip. And if you don't, I recommend that you install pip because it's really useful. So Google is your friend, figure out how to do it. And I'm gonna now show you how argparse works. So let's hop into that. So here we have this directory. I have a file that I've already made and I'll show you how that works. And then we have our input file. So I'm just gonna run this. So the very, I'll just show you how it works once it's done first. So if I just were to run this script now, it'll actually tell us an error message here saying this is how you use the script and it'll tell me the things that are required and the things that are not and what I haven't input and what I still need to input in order to make this work. So it says usage, fast data, fast queue, and it says there is an optional help there is an input, which is input, and there's an output called output, and there's a qual called quality score. And these different things are things that I should be supplying. You can see the qual is in brackets over here, and that means it's optional. And then it gives us the first error, which is argument in is required. And so if I do this, and I then say in, and I go file.fasta, and I run it, it'll now say argument out is also required. So if I do that, then I can go file.fastq and that'll be what my output file looks like. If we hit enter, that should now be fine. And let's see what it did here. It created an output file. Let me just show you what these look like. So less file.fasta, this is what our fasta file looks like. We have a greater than sign and then the name, and this whole line is something we wanna keep. And then we have a bunch of lines of sequence. A fast Q file, which it becomes here. Let's take a look what that looks like. Okay, so what happens here is that fast Q files will actually wrap when you show them here because the sequence is really long, but this is all still one line. So what you should do when you're using less here, if you do dash and then capital S, that's important, then you can see them pop out on one line. So then you stop wrapping, which can be really annoying when you're looking at large files like that. So now we can see that we have our set of four lines here and all of the quality scores got populated as an I because that's a relatively high quality score. It's something that if you are using most programs, it's not gonna filter out an I because that's a high quality score. So that's a safe thing to put in if you don't actually have quality scores. Now, this is the default. So let's look at what we can do. And if you do up on the command line, just the up arrow, you'll get back to the commands in, or in the order in which you looked at them before. Now, if I said, let's try to do something wrong. Let's set a Q. And so here it says it expected one argument. Let's do dash Q um, five. So this actually works because you can shorten these. So 
this is actually a really funny thing that that art parse does for you. So if you just want to do dot i, dot o, and dot dash i, dash o, and dash q, you can do that. And because there's only one of the arguments that starts with an i, one that starts with an o, and one that starts with a q, it'll guess correctly which of them you actually wanted. So if we run that and then we do less dash s file dot fast q, and now it's filled in all of these with fives. And so that actually works. Now, if I do want to mess it up, I can do dash m or something, and then it'll say unrecognized arguments. Basically, m is not an argument. Don't know what you're doing here. Please fix it. And so argparse helps you in many ways here to make sure that what you're doing with your new command line program actually makes sense. So it forces the users to use the program correctly. It also means that input and output are required, but quality is just optional. However, if you use quality wrong and you, for instance, don't put an argument, then it's going to tell you that you're missing something here. So it's going to enforce a lot of things and just make sure that everything runs smoothly. So now let's take a look at how we accomplished each of these things. So notice here we have a required input and output and we have an optional quality. So this is accomplished down here. When you're doing an arg parse script, what you can basically do is go to the blog post where I have this uh, post, where I have all the code, and you can just copy the parts of it. You can actually copy everything up here. Maybe not the author who has that, but you want to import arg parse and you want your shebang line up here. And then you just have a function called run that passes in arguments. And those are then the arguments that you use. And then you have this bottom part where it just says, if we're just running it as main, just run main. And this is the function main, easy enough. You don't have to worry about how this works. If you want to get more into Python, that's easy enough to do, but we don't really need to know why this works in order to use argparse to make a command line tool out of our Python scripts. So what we do need is we have arg parse, we have argument parser, and you just fill in these different things. So first we have a description, which is convert a fast A file to a fast Q file. Let's see if I can make the description pop up here. If I do dash H, it'll show us the help menu. And this is actually where all of the help pops up. So you have your description here, convert a fast A file to a fast Q file, same as over here. And we have each of our arguments in fast put input, fast a input file. And that's what we put right here. And we have out, we have quality score, and we can even put a description here. And so that way your users and you for later, if you're using the script yourself, which you often will be, you'll remember what you're actually supposed to be doing here. I notice that I'm missing a parenthesis here. So if I just save this and now I run it again, that change has already taken effect. So all you have to do is save the file and just go up and run. That's it. It is so easy. And so that way you can also quickly make changes to your Python script and immediately run them with the same complex set of parameters, everything you want to do. You can just do it from the command line. And so this is how I develop all of my Python scripts. I always make them into arg parse command line programs because working with NGS data, I live on the command line. This is where I spend all of my time. So let's take a look at how we did this. You can basically just copy this code and fill it in for yourself, but I'll point out a couple of things. So you do, I usually like to start it with dash or a dash dash. Both of those are totally fine. And you wanna have a little description. Um, the dest here is destination, and that is an important one because that's how you're going to refer to it in the function. So up here in the run function, we're passing in args, and here's where we're using it. We have args.qualityscore. That comes from dest equals quality score down here. Args input comes from destination equals input, and output comes from dest equals output. And here we're making sure that this the types of these variables are what we want. So you can force it, them to be strings, you can force them to be integers, you can force them to be floats, I believe, and also booleans. And so if you have bool, it's like true or false, it's the only thing it'll take. 
or it'll try to interpret them to true or false, which is always fun. And here we say required equals true, required equals true. So that's how we enforced that we do need to know an output and an input file. And for the quality, this one we have type equals string as well, and the default is an I. So by setting a default, we we have a default and it is not required. So generally you'd either want it to be required or to have a default. You can also do a flag that just makes a variable true if the user uses it and makes it false if the user doesn't put that flag. And you do that by doing a variable called store true or store false. You can just look at the arg parse documentation for how to accomplish those kind of special flags and so on. This whole part in here is where you put your own code. And in this case, I'm doing something really simple. I'm just saying I want to open a file and by default, it opens it for reading. And then this is my output file. And so args.input, args.output, these are the strings that the user put in. And at this point, if it has an issue, if it's not a real file, it'll crash just like it normally would. So if I do in, um, if I do, if I spell it wrong, I do like fill.fastA and I do out fill.fastQ, then it'll say, it'll basically crash just like it normally would and tell you where that happens. So you don't lose any of the debugging features or anything. And that also means that if people run into issues with missing packages or something, they'll see the same output files that you would see if you're running it directly in Python. And so it says, and so in this case, it says no such file or directory fill dot fast a. And so that's how you can decide, okay, I want to go fix that. Let's do file dot fast a. Yeah. And so now we have our fill dot fast q and that is a real fast q file. Sweet. And so all you have to do is copy these things and look at the arg parse documentation if you want to do something more complicated and just fill in these different help things. So what I usually do is I copy one of my scripts, I put it into a different file and I replace this part and I replace these parts as needed based on the template of a program that I already have. You can find the code from this video and from all of my other videos at omgenomics.com. I'll link to that in the description here. And you can also sign up for email updates over there so that you get emails every week when these videos come out, as well as if I have any other resources. Like last week, I just released my very first software product, which helps you create circos plots without writing a single line of code. This is called Circa, and it's a really pretty video that I encourage you to check out, even if you don't need to make circos plots anytime soon. It's just fun to watch. So if you have any questions at all, post them in the comments below this video, and I will get to them there. And I always answer everyone's questions, and sometimes I even make videos like this one to answer your questions. It's always great inspiration for new videos when you guys do that, so I appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time on the OMG Gnomic Show.